Well, first of all, there was admittedly a tremendous selection bias. The brains donated, not randomly discovered, were from people who had concerns about CTE. That's the first thing. Yeah. Uh, secondly, what it did, it validated uh, kind of a belief or theory that we talked about. Boy, CTE is prevalent. And what it shows you is, yes, it is an issue. But three things are happening in football, and they're all good. The market is changing. At the youth level, less hitting early. Good thing. Uh, equipment is evolving. Good thing. And also, players are retiring a little earlier. Top players, to Brickashaw Ferguson for note. I think that's a good thing. I believe football should be played. I do not believe football should be played forever. I think it should be played at a tackling level from maybe 15 to 29. Now, there are punters, kickers, quarterbacks. You get inside the trenches. I don't think it's a game that should be played for 20 years at the highest level. So I, my, my takeaway is, while the numbers are startling, I jump in and I read it. There's a tremendous selection bias. And my takeaway is, football's safer today than it's been my entire life. I don't want to sound like someone who thinks the earth is flat or that climate change doesn't exist, but I just think the whole CTE story is being told completely out of context. It's being told in a way to attack football. I think that uh, brain damage in boxing, in football, in hockey, in soccer, in any of these contact sports where you use your head at all, CTE is probably there and relevant. But this hysteria, like, oh, we got to end football. Do we have to end candy? Candy does more damage to kids <laughs> than football. That's just a fact. You, that is a fact. Candy, sugar, kills, afflicts you in ways. Again, I'm living testament to it. Alcohol. Thank you. But I'm just saying candy. We're not trying to outlaw candy. We're not, there's not hysteria about what candy does to kids and human beings. And again, so I'm, I'm very defensive about football. The attack on football, to me, is completely out of context. Uh, again, you look at soccer, any of these other sports where you use your head, it's there. People now understand it, just like we understand the risk of candy, and we still eat it. Fast food, we still eat it. Alcohol, we still drink it. Weed, we still smoke it. But football, we got to put a stop to it. Get out of here. Yeah, I mean, I this, the numbers are staggering. I mean, I was shocked. It's a bias report. I, it, it is a bias report, but still, the numbers are staggering. And regardless if these were family members who had already known that they've experienced this with their their loved one or yeah, whoever. They had concerns. They had concerns. My what what stood out to me was there was a 23 year old. The youngest age on here was 23 year old. That's not a long time to be in any field, any sport, any contact sport. I don't care what you're doing. That lets me know that this is not just an NFL thing. It's because at 23 years old, it doesn't take a whole lot of football career to acquire this and these symptoms. Another thing that, that for me as a player, and I heard you say this to Colin earlier today on The Herd, if I were to see these numbers as I have and you were to ask me, Greg, are you gonna, would you play football? Would you do it all over again? Absolutely, I would. Because it, it provided not only myself, but my family with an opportunity that we never had. And so, but as a parent, as a parent of four kids, a one being parent. a son. A wealthy parent. Wealthy yeah, parent or, or not. I don't, uh, I don't even put that in, 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 I don't even consider that. That's, that's but neither here nor there. your life has changed it due has, to some wealth. It has changed, but I, I wouldn't tell my son that he can't play, but I'm not going to encourage it because of what I know, because of experience. It has nothing to do with wealth. Candy? <laughs> I, I don't really care for my kids eating candy, too. I'm with you. I've candy. seen fan It's more up. dangerous. Yeah, I, Jason, I'm with you from the standpoint that I'm, I'm, I'm a football purist, okay? And these numbers are going to be skewed because you're talking about 100 and, 110 out of 111 dead people, dead guys that played football. So the numbers are, are going to be skewed. Um, at the end of the day, we've always known that the game of football is a violent game. 
You know, and to your point, Colin, listen, I've coached young kids. That starting kids when they're 15 years old doesn't fly because I've coached 12 and 13 year olds who never played a down of football before and they came out and competed against my kids that played, started playing when they were six, seven, eight years old. They couldn't even compete. They had no business on the field. You, you can't catch them up. There's not enough coaching that catches them up. I get it. When the NFL gets slapped with, with $760 million lawsuit, okay, there's going to be some blowback because now they're in a position where what else? What else, what, 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 what else can happen, you know, to take a massive amount of money out of our pocket? So, yeah, it starts at the NFL level. It filters down to the collegiate level, into the high school, then down to the youth. You know, but it's way, to me, it's way overblown because as long as my son wants to play and he doesn't have any concussions, concussion issues, he's going to play. Because you know what? It, the, it, what the game teaches him and what the game is meant to me, it it's, speaks volumes well, for what it would mean for, for him and his life and young kids that play the game of football. You know, Seth points on something. I remember when I was a little kid way before the executives for the tobacco industry stood up and sort of embarrassed themselves. We all remember that picture, right? I didn't smoke. I just knew smoking wasn't good for you. There's never been a time in my life that I thought, if I play football, I'll live longer. <laughs> like, it's just, it's just known. Like, I grew up in a town where there was commercial fishing. Like, there didn't need to be a national security alert that if you went out on the rough seas in the winter, people could die. Coal miner. Coal miner. Like, we live in a country where... Risk is part of sports adventure, and men tend to move toward it often. Listen, and so football I, players, I, football players understand. They understand the ramifications. They understand the trade-off of what they're doing. You are risking your your well-being in the moment and your future well-being for the monetary gain of today. We understand that. To say this, that's not the case is is it is it true? But not just the monetary gain. Take me again. I didn't earn any money off football. But it did move me from poor working class to where I am now. Absolutely. So many guys have been moved from dangerous inner city communities to college campuses, had their eyes open, and moved on and up. That's why I'm so defensive about football. When it comes to studies, all these stu you get exactly what you pay for. Whoever paid for the study wanted these results. That's how studies work. 